All right, so in this video, we're going to continue talking about differentiation rules, um, in particular, uh, the product rule and quotient rule. Um, so the product rule, uh, we'll start off ddx of our product. And the two things that I'm going to use to multiply together would be f of x and g of x. So two functions being multiplied together for a product. So the product rule is going to say f prime of x times g of x plus g prime of x times f of x. Now, that is something that you'll, you'll want to know very, very well, um, but I don't necessarily remember it in this form. Um, the best way that I've found is to treat one of these as the first and treat one of them as the second. Let's say that this is the first and this is the second. Then, it would be the derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second back times the first. And you'll hear me say that a thousand times this semester when it comes to a product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second back times the first. A lot easier than f of x and g of x is. Um, and so I'm actually not going to prove this. You'll see that that's going to be one of your uh, assignments in the upcoming uh, days. Um, but I would like to go ahead and work an example. Uh, so the example that we're going to look at is going to be f of x equals... 2x cubed minus 3 times 17x to the fourth minus 6x plus 2. So we're going to find the derivative. Um, and I, I made a joke earlier about how can you imagine having to do this with the limit definition. Uh, well, thank goodness, especially now that we, we have these, these differentiation rules, right? So to do this, again, it's very, very simple. Uh, we're just going to identify this guy here as the first. And we'll identify this guy here as the second. It doesn't matter how you do this. Um, the operations we're dealing with are addition and multiplication. So this is all commutative. Um, and this is actually a linear combination of sorts. So let's just follow the rule. We're going to have derivative of the first times the second. So the derivative of the first is going to be a 6x squared minus 0. So multiplied down to get 6x squared. Derivative of a constant is 0. Uh, so there's your derivative of the first times the second. So just write that second down. You don't have to do anything. You're just copying it down. Plus derivative of the second back times the first. So the derivative of this thing now back times the first. So the derivative of 17x to the fourth uh, would actually give us 68x cubed minus 6 plus 0 back times the first of 2x cubed minus 3. So this was the derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second back times the first. Uh, so again, a very, very uh, mechanical process if you go nice and slow, even labeling things. Uh, again, this would be your unsimplified derivative. Um, if you want it simplified, which I'm sure the book in my math lab will want uh, quite a bit of, uh, then from there you'll apply those same skills you learned um, in the pre-chapter handout uh, that we worked on. Uh, but I don't want to waste video time going through that since we've already spent time on the past. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the quotient rule, and we'll proceed pretty similar to how we handle that product rule. Uh, we've got the derivative of the quotient f of x over g of x with respect to x. This is actually going to be g of x times f prime of x minus f of x g prime of x all over g of x squared. Okay, so again, to, to me that means not a whole lot other than a formal notation. Um, as we say these things out loud and talk through them, um, I would call this guy the high and I would call this guy the low. And so as we look through this, you've got low derivative high minus the high derivative low over low squared. Um, and so for the quotient rule, uh, you might even catch a little rhythm in my voice as I start to say these over and over and over again. Uh, but I generally will say low d high minus high d low over low low. So low d high minus high d low over low low. Um, but we'll look at a couple examples and, and within a, a couple uh, of days you'll be used to, used to saying this in your head. Uh, so the example we're going to look at here um, is going to be 
f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x cubed plus 3. All right, so you can see we've got a quotient. Uh, we've got a high and we've got a low. So following the, the template there, uh, and I should mention also, again, I would normally prove this, but that's, again, like the product rule going to be one of your homework ex exercises in the next few days. Um, so if, you're, if you don't believe me and you want to see how it works, um, you will find out, I promise. Uh, so uh, anyway, here we go. Um, we've got low, which is, which is going to be the x cubed plus 3. Derivative of the high, so the derivative of this, this would give us a 2x minus 0. And then we have minus the high derivative of the low. The derivative of the low would be a 3x squared. And then plus 0. All over low, low. So for this one, it's just going to be x cubed plus 3 squared. Okay, so we've got low derivative high minus high derivative low over low squared. Uh, so feel, feel free to, to again, rewind, rewatch the video uh, to see the example worked out if you had a hard time keeping up with it. Uh, but really, guys, it is just a matter of, uh, at this point at least, um, understanding the, the notation and how the, the rules themselves lay out so that you can label accordingly and just fill in as you go. Um, again, this is an unsimplified derivative. Um, if you were asked to simplify it, you could. Um, I will have you do unsimplified derivatives uh, in a written assignment, um, and I would like them to look like I've been doing them in class or in the videos. I don't, we're not in class anymore, uh, as I've been doing them in the videos. Um, so um, keep in mind, you know, string it all out. Don't get too crazy with simplifying things. I've even been leaving the zeros in there to show that I know the derivatives of constants are zeros. I would encourage you to do the same, um, but just again, this is an unsimplified derivative um, if that's what we're asking. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention uh, in this section is higher order derivatives. Um, and so, for example, um, if I started with y equals x cubed, and I wanted the derivative, we could say, okay, that's going to be 3x squared. But what happens if I take the derivative of the derivative? Well, not a whole lot. You just do the same thing. Multiply down and subtract 1. So now you'd have a 6x. And what if I wanted the derivative of the derivative of the derivative? Well, at this point, now you're at 6. And what if you wanted even another derivative, which would be the, called the fourth order derivative? Well, the notation would change slightly. And in this case, the derivative of a constant would be 0. Uh, so you can see that our original function is 4 times differentiable. Beyond that, you get the same 0 on all of these. So higher order derivatives, really, um, in doing them, is nothing different. Just take the derivative of the previous derivative. Um, in application, we'll talk about later, it's pretty interesting how they tie in. Um, but what I want to discuss isn't so much how to do them, but the notation. You saw that in this first example, I used y prime, y double prime, y triple prime, and then when we got to the fourth order, I needed to distinguish um, the, that it was a derivative, so we put these parentheses around it. And so that would continue then as far down as you needed to go until we say we say we have the nth order derivative. Now, um, that's our, our uh, Newton's notation. In ter terms of the Leibniz notation, the dy dx, it's a little bit different. Um, so if this is y, then the derivative with respect to x would be that dy dx, okay? Now, if I'm going to take the derivative of a derivative, so I'm going to take the derivative of the derivative with respect to x, this is actually going to turn into d squared y over dx squared. Uh, so it looks a little bit strange, but the reason I, I, I wanted to show you the way I have is because I think it should make sense now. Uh, the d squared y over dx squared, this is the same, essentially the same, the same thing as this guy right here in just different notation. But the squared on top goes in the middle, goes after the d, right? Because you can see you have two of the d's there. But for the dx's, it goes at the end because the dx is in whole, there are two of them. So as we carry this notation down, we would have d cubed y 
over dx cubed all the way down to the nth order derivative with respect to x. So uh, again, it's purely notational. Doing these higher order derivatives, as I mentioned, is just continuing to take a derivative, um, but it's important to understand the notation uh, and how uh, you, you're gonna be instructed to do certain things.